Hi everybody! Thanks for taking some time out of your day to listen to a story. Today is a good one. This is When Jackie and Hank Met. This is by Kathy Goldberg Fishman, illustrated by Mark Elliott. Jack Roosevelt Robinson and Hank and Henry Benjamin Greenberg were born eight years and 1,000 miles apart. Nobody knew these babies would grow up and play baseball. Nobody knew Jackie and Hank would meet and become heroes. Jackie and Hank didn't meet when they were children. Their lives were very different. Jackie's family had lived in the southern part of the, of the United States for a long time. His grandfather had been a slave. Hank's parents had moved to the United States from Romania, a country in Eastern Europe. One day, Jackie's father left home to go look for work and did not return. So Jackie's mother took Jackie and his brothers and sister to California. They were the only black family in their Pasadena neighborhood. Hank and his brothers and sister lived with their parents in New York City apartment more than 2,000 miles away from Pasadena. Hank's neighborhood was crowded with immigrants from many different countries. Jackie learned how to play baseball in his sandy Pasadena neighborhood. Hank learned how to play baseball in the streets and parks of New York. Jackie attended church, and Hank went to synagogue. Some of Jackie's neighbors threw rocks at him just because he was black. Some of Hank's neighbors threw rocks at him just because he was Jewish. All across the country, many hotels and restaurants had signs that said no blacks or Jews allowed. The Declaration of Independence declared that all men are created equal, but some people ignored that. Jews, blacks, Irish, Native Americans, and many other groups were denied the freedom to join certain clubs or live in certain neighborhoods. Black children attended separate schools from white children. And blacks and whites couldn't play baseball together. They played in separate leagues. Jackie knew he could make money by playing ball, but in California, the major sports teams did not have black people. Hank had problems, too. The Detroit Tigers asked him to join the team, but some people didn't want Jews to play. Go home! Jews can't play ball! Those people would yell when Hank came up to bat. Jackie and Hank didn't give up. The mean words made Hank mad, but he stayed on the team. Jackie kept looking for a job in sports. He finally became a football player for the Honolulu Bears, a team made up of native Hawaiians, blacks, and whites. Now Jackie and Hank were about 4,000 miles apart. Jackie and Hank both played ball in, until the United States entered World War II and they joined the Army. But Jackie and Hank did not meet in the Army. The Army sent Jackie to Fort Riley, Kansas for training. Since he was black, Jackie could not play on the Army baseball team or go to school to become an officer. But he stood up for his rights, along with other black soldiers, and spoke out about the injustices in the Army. Soon the school admitted Jackie and he became an officer. Hank had already been trained in the Army, and so he was sent to China, more than 6,600 miles away from Fort Riley. He too became an officer and worked hard to crush the Nazi government in Germany. The Nazis had declared war on most of Europe, as well as the United States, and were persecuting and killing many innocent people, including Jews and blacks. Jackie and Hank were good soldiers, but they did not want to be soldiers forever. After they were discharged, the two men took off their army uniforms and went back to playing ball. Jackie joined the Kansas City Monarchs, an all-black baseball team that was part of the separate Negro League. Hank became a Detroit Tiger again. Now Jackie and Hank were closer. They were only 765 miles apart, and both of their lives were about to change. Hank's life changed when the Detroit Tigers traded him to the Pittsburgh Pirates. But one thing remained the same. People still shouted mean words when Hank came up to bat, even though by then there were more Jewish players in the major leagues. Jackie's life changed because many people felt it was wrong for blacks and whites to play in separate sports, sports leagues. One of those people was Branch Rickey, the president of the Brooklyn Dodgers. Branch wanted everyone to play on the same teams. Jackie told him, I can be a Brooklyn Dodger. Branch knew Jackie was the player he wanted. They both knew that when Jackie Robinson left the Negro League and became the first black player on a major league team. Some players would try to fight Jackie, and some baseball fans would shout hateful words when Jackie came up to bat or might even threaten his life. 
Both men knew this decision would change baseball forever, but they also knew it was the right thing to do. These changes brought Jackie and Hank much closer. And on a bright spring day in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in 1947, the Brooklyn Dodgers and the Pittsburgh Pirates face each other on Forbes Field. Jackie and Hank would finally meet. During the third inning, Jackie was, or Hank was guarding the first baseline as Jackie strode up to bat. Jackie and Hank were now only 90 feet apart. And that's when it happened. Jackie bunted the ball, kabunk. He headed for first at full speed. When Hank stretched out to, the field, to field the ball, wham, the two men collided. Now nothing separated Jackie and Hank. Fight, 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 the people in the crowd yelled. But Jackie and Hank didn't fight. They picked themselves up and kept playing baseball. Blacks can't play baseball with whites, people continued to shout at Jackie through the game. Go home, they yelled. Hank remembered similar words being shouted at him. And the next time Jackie and Hank met at first base, Hank said, don't pay attention to these guys, stick in there. Jackie later told a New York Times reporter, class tells, it sticks out all over Mr. Greenberg. From that day forward, Jackie and Hank were friends. And even though some people still didn't want Jackie or Hank to play ball, many other people did. Not long after Jackie joined the Brooklyn Dodgers, the Negro League ended, and many great black ball players became members of other teams. Jackie and Hank had proved that baseball was about talent, not about the color of religion. During their careers, both Jackie and Hank won Most Valuable Player and many other baseball awards. After Hank retired, he became a manager for the Cleveland Indians. When his team stayed at a hotel that would not allow blacks, Hank wrote a note to the hotel owners, if you want my team to stay with you, you have to take all the players. Because of that, the hotel allowed everyone to stay. When Jackie retired, he became a vice president of a large company, but he also continued to work for equal rights. Jackie served on the board of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, or NAACP, and shared their Freedom Fund drive to help raise money for civil rights. On one occasion, an argument broke out in New York City between black business owners and Jewish business owners. Jackie got on the radio and said, it is wrong for any group to use hatred and prejudice to resolve a dispute. When Jackie and Hank collided in Forbes Field, many people thought they would fight. Jackie and Hank did fight, but they didn't fight each other. Instead, they fought racism and hatred by teaching each other, by treating each other as equals and continuing to speak out against injustice. Jackie Robinson and Hank Greenberg were not only baseball heroes, but heroes for the rights of people everywhere. Then in the back, we have some baseball cards, some dates about their life and websites that you can go to to find out more information about both players. Thank you for listening, boys and girls. I will see you soon.